So we're going to look at uh, a few things to do to help alleviate uh, lower back pain that is caused by um, sacroiliac joint dysfunction. So the sacro sacroiliac joint is joint here. I don't know if you can see that, but it's where the, the spine comes down into the pelvis and then it's where the two sides of the, the pelvic the iliac crest um, kind of align uh, attached to the two sides of the inner crest attach to the coccyx. Now, uh, there's a little bit of um, bilateral deviation there. The pelvis isn't always perfectly aligned or perfectly uh, symmetrical. It's usually asymmetrical, and that's fine. And that makes it very difficult to uh, to measure the alignment of the pelvis and determine true iliac joint dysfunction just simply by doing like hands-on um, manipulations or uh, palpation. So some of the pain of, that people experience is in the lower back. When they say, oh, I've got this pain in my lower back, they kind of they rub here. And that's actually not the lower back. The lower back's up here. That is your hip. And so the pain is usually at the top of the, uh, the, the gluteus maximus around this area here. Okay, so one of the first things you're going to do is get a trigger point ball or a tennis ball and do some uh, trigger point release. So if you're doing the right hip, I'm only going to do the right side here. You can obviously do both sides or whichever side is painful. Take the right foot, place it behind the left knee so you're in a figure four position. The ball goes under the hip here. Find the fleshy points, try to avoid the hard bony bits and then just move it around that glute complex, the glutes being the glute, gluteus maximus, minimus and medius, the three main uh, muscles in the hip complex. There's a lot more muscles there, but this isn't an anatomy lesson. So you go around and you find, uh, you go onto the side and you get into those lateral glutes and they're usually tender and sore, so be careful here. You might need to you know, change your position, put a bit of weight on your arms, eat these off. When you find those trigger points, the trigger points are the spots that are really sore and tender. When you find those, you'll know it, there's no denying it. So you've then got to try and sort of put your weight into it gently and gradually. Try and relax the muscle off. It sounds counterintuitive. You've got to try and relax the muscle off. Just take some deep breaths. Stay on that spot. So I found one there and I can feel the muscle almost trying to pulsate underneath it, um, on top of the ball. And sometimes what you get is pain referral. So if it's a true trigger point and there's some nerve irritation in there as well, you may get irritation, like a bubbling or prickly sensation, or even an aching sensation in the running down the leg. Uh, you might feel it in the foot, because um, that's where those, those nerves, in particular the sciatic nerve run, and that's quite a common area around there. That's, uh, that area there is kind of where the piriformis is. The sciatic nerve is runs right through that area. So that's a common one there. So you may feel that you get some kind of referral sensation down the leg when you're there. It's fine, don't panic. And then you just stay on those spots. Do that for a couple of minutes. And then when you're ready, you come off of there. And then we're just gonna do a little stretch for the for the hips. So laying on your back, flatten the spine down, brace your abs, pelvic floor engaged. And just one at a time, bring your knee up, bring it in with your hands, tuck the chin in, hold it for a second or two, bring it back to the other side. Exhale. So this is a nice and gentle mobility movement. Do that for about a minute or so, and then turn over onto all fours. Because there's pain in the lower back, we're gonna do some mid-spine mobility. So do some cap stretches. Again, do that for about a minute or so. You can do some thread the needle. So you get some rotation through the mid-spine. You may feel some pops and cracks through the spine, it's absolutely fine. 
So we're mobilizing the mid spine to ease tension that is built up in the lower back. Then, from there, you come up into a half kneeling position. Back foot is in line with the front and the back knee. Make sure you're on your toes there, don't have the foot flat like that. So you're getting a stretch through these plantar flexors as well. Tuck the tailbone under. Your front foot, your ankle wants to be under the knee, toes forward. So tuck the tailbone under, bit of tension in the abs, bit of tension in the bum, hands on the knee, push that knee forward, so we're stretching out the hips here. Work within a pain-free range of motion on anything here. Don't if you're experiencing pain, and when I say pain, I mean more than just like a normal um, the normal level of discomfort that you feel from a deep stretch. I'm talking about a genuine pain. If you feel pain, uh, if you feel like it's doing you some harm, then either regress the range of motion or stop the exercise entirely. And with this one, you can build up that range of motion, get a little bit deeper into the stretch there, and you'll also start to feel a stretch through the back and front foot. So you do that on each side, then back onto your back, and we're gonna go back to stretching uh, the glutes. So you bring that knee up, this time hands on top of the knee, deep breath in, brace the abs, and then push the knee into the hand. about five to 10 seconds. Do the other side, inhale, brace. So you're just gently pushing the knee into the hand so you get some uh, activation and deactivation through the antagonist muscles. Uh, so it helps to relax off the, the, any tension in that hip complex a little bit. Do that three or four times on, on each side. Then we need to do some core stability exercise. So flatten the back down, bring the legs up one at a time into tabletop position, brace the abs. Now you can either do heel taps, where you're keeping the knees flexed, don't let the spine move, so keep that spine flattened down onto your fingertips the whole time. Keep that those abs braced as you're doing this. It's harder if you go into extensions and try and extend the foot as far as you can. Ideally, you'll be able to get it down here without the spine moving, but again, work on the range of motion that's available to you and the range of stability and control you have through here. The harder version is to do dead bugs, so the arms are up, shoulders down. Flatten the spine down, brace the abs, squeeze everything tight. You should be shaking when that happens. And again, So do that three or four times on each side, maybe five or six times, up to you. And then we want to work on uh, strengthening the hips as well, the glutes. So after you've done your core stiffening exercise, we do some glute exercises. So one knee up, we're going to do a single leg uh, bridge. So foot flat, abs braced, push the hip up, use the glutes to drive the hip up, so you want to be feeling it here. Don't rest your weight on the floor, just drive up, squeeze the bum, slowly down. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but I'm curling my toes back so that the weight distribution in the foot is towards the mid and rear foot rather than towards the toes. So that encourages more engagement through the glutes rather than the hamstrings. So you do 10 to 20 of those, build it up on each side, and then into this side lying position. This is like a, uh, it's just a side bridge, it's a version of the clam. So you start with your, um, your knees bent. So this uh, lower limb is flat on the, on the floor. Knees bent, rotate the pelvis forward so we're level through here. Don't let the pelvis roll away from you. Keep this forearm flat and your shoulder blade pulled down here. Tension in the abs, lift that leg up and then push the knee down to lift the hips up. So it's very similar to the exercise we just did, but now the emphasis is on the side of the hip rather than the back of the hip. And again, do 10 to 20 of those, building the reps up gradually as you get stronger. Do three or four rounds of that. And, uh, and then when you've finished, finish off with a figure of four stretch, again for the glutes. So bend the knees, this leg 
comes up into here. So the right foot is behind the left knee. Place the hands behind uh, the back of the knee. Pull it in. I'm using this elbow and pushing it into the knee here, shaping that angle. There. So the stretch is here. It's in the right button. And you just hold that. And hold it for 30 seconds to a minute. And you can do it on both sides. Like so. And it'll feel slightly different one side to the next. Again, work within the pain-free range of motion. Don't stretch things so much that it hurts and it causes tension in the muscles. You know, it's gonna take time to develop the uh, flexibility and the stretch tolerance as well as the core uh, stability. So a lot of time muscles are tight and tense, not because they're short and lengthening, because they're weak and have a low stretch tolerance. So you need to strengthen the weaker muscles and improve core stability to release the tension in the muscles that are compensating for that. Uh, so that is a little routine that you can do uh, to help relieve uh, lower back pain that may or may not be caused by uh, separate iliac SI joint dysfunction. Thanks.